If you have B's, C's, try to show and prove. Hey you guys and welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Naja and I make college or lifestyle related content. Today's video will be a walk through my high school transcript that was accepted by many schools including Stanford, Johns Hopkins, USC, NYU and all these other schools that accepted me. So I'm gonna walk you guys through the classes and grades that I took in my high school career, just to show you guys what a competitive transcript may look like. So just a few things before we start. My school, like I said in my other videos, does not offer IB, the IB like diploma. We only have AP classes and those are weighted plus 10 points. So my weighted GPA calculates to plus 10 points and my unweighted GPA has all the grades without the 10 points. And then honors classes are not weighted at all at my school. So if you see anything that says honors or it says H, it's just like a regular class. It's just because I was in gifted. So all my science are kind of like advanced, but they're not really like weighted that way. Basically, my transcript begins in eighth grade. I took ninth grade math in eighth grade just to get ahead, I guess. But this was not factored into my high school GPA. So in eighth grade, I received a 91 and an 88 in algebra honors and which was my ninth grade math in eighth grade but it wasn't factored into my gpa so just to get out the way so starting in ninth grade i'm going to tell you the classes i took the grades i received in each one and then i'll tell you my gpa after each semester in ninth grade i had ninth literature and composition i got 100 general health a 99 analytic geometry a 98 intro to business and tech a 100, Physics 1, Gifted Honors, a 96, Spanish 1, 98, Visual Arts Comprehensive, 96, and World Geography, I received a 96. So as you can see, I had straight A's my first semester of high school. I, I knew that going in, I wanted to have good grades to start off, to have a good foundation to set my GPA for my ninth grade year, just in case the years after that I received lower scores, it would still kind of like balance out and I would still have a high GPA. So my first um, semester I got straight A's, they fluctuated from a 96 to a 100. I took no AP classes, so no weighted classes in my ninth grade year. And my GPA was a 97.875 on a 100 point scale. The next semester I took all the same classes and basically I got the same kind of grades. The lowest grade was a 96 and the highest grade was a 100. So in 10th grade I took 10th literature and composition and I got a 98. AP World History, a 105, Art, Drawing, and Painting, a 97, Business and Technology, a 99, Chemistry Honors, a 96, Advanced Algebra, a 99, Spanish 2, a 97, and Web Design, a 99. So as you can see, I took one weighted class, which was AP World History. I received a 105. That 105 was calculated into my weighted GPA. So my weighted GPA increased to a 98.750 and my unweighted GPA was a 97.5. My lowest grade was a 97 this semester, and my highest was a 105. And then I took the same classes again the second semester, and my GPA was a 98.25, and my unweighted was a 97. At my school, you had to take at least two years of Spanish to graduate, but I ended up taking it. I ended up taking three just because I wanted to. I suggest you take as many years as you can of language because that looks good to colleges and college admissions officers to see that you took the time and like the effort to study another language. In case I want to pursue that interest in college, I'll be able to say I have a background in Spanish because I took three years or four years in high school. The summer after my 10th grade year, I took honors pre-calculus at the Science and Mathematics Summer Enrichment Academy. So I took that, I received a 99 and 100 for like the both the semesters. And so that's how I got ahead, like two years ahead of the math that I was supposed to take. And that's how I took AP Calc junior year. And I didn't take a math my senior year, which is messing me up. And that's why I'm taking classes online. So my 11th grade year, I took the most AP classes. I took four AP classes, which was a big jump from just the one I had taken. I handled it well. 11th grade year was actually my best year of high school in terms of like academics and grades and stuff, but it was super stressful. And I would not recommend stressing myself out like this again like if you are considering taking all these rigorous classes make sure you can handle it and have good like stress relievers because I was stressed out I took AP Calc I received a 110 <laughs> so I know in my last video I said I was like horrible at AP Calc this grade does not reflect my performance in the like math concepts because like public education you don't have to try that hard really 
you just do your work and you'll get the grades but I didn't learn the concept as well as I needed to learn the concepts but I still received a good grade in the class if that makes sense that reflects how easy like the public education system is because I still got a perfect grade in the class and didn't know much so AP calculus AV I received a 110 AP language and composition a 106 AP psychology a 103, AP Visual Art and Drawing, a 104, Biology Honors, a 99, Fibers 1, a 97, Spanish 3, a 93, and U.S. History is 100. So my lowest grade this semester, my 11th grade year, my first semester, my lowest grade was a 93. And that's the lowest grade I've ever received in high school. And when I tell y'all I was so sad about this grade, like, y'all are probably like, it's an A, like at least it wasn't a C or whatever, but I was just so sad and it was so not that serious now that I'm looking back on it. I don't know. I was just going through it. Like I was so mad at my Spanish teacher for giving me that 93 because like the grade was like messed up and it was just too much and I was like so mad, but it really doesn't matter that much. You can get B's, you can get A's and still get into top universities and colleges. So don't worry if you have B's. A lot of people are asking me like, oh I have this many B's and that many B's in my first year of high school and my second year and as long as you show improvement throughout your four years of high school so you can get B's all your first year and then if you get A's your second year it shows that you improved you learned what you needed to learn that really shows that you put an effort into bettering yourself as a student so don't worry if you have like low grades or anything because you can always improve that especially if you're going into your junior or senior year. Your junior year is the most important so try to do your best in your junior year. At the end of my first semester of 11th grade uh, my GPA was a 101.5 and my unweighted GPA was a 96.5. On my second semester of 11th grade I did a lot better in most of my classes. I got a hundred and above in every class. One thing that I regret doing in, in 11th grade was taking AP Psychology online. Psychology is not offered at my school at all, but I wanted to at least have a basis of it before applying to these colleges because that's what I wanted to major in. I just couldn't like have access to it. But taking an AP online is really hard. Like it's not for me. I wouldn't suggest anyone take it online just because it's so like rigorous and psychology is like pure memorization type thing so it was just really hard for me to understand and do so I didn't really learn as much as I should have online and it kind of struggled like that was a low like a 102 is a 92 so that was kind of a low A that I received in the class okay so 12th grade is when I first started taking dual enrollment class I took three dual enrollment classes all together so I took anthropology psychology and English 1102 at my like local university so my schedule was AP biology I received a 106 AP government I received a 106 applied design I received a 100 economics a 95 journalism a 100 Anthropology a 110 and psychology a 105 and my GPA was a 104.149 and the unweighted was a 97.34 So co when you take college classes, they are weighted just like an AP class basically if you receive an A plus It's a 110 if you received an A It's a 105 and if you received an A minus it's a hundred I received an A plus in anthropology and a A in psychology. So then my second semester <laughs> Senior itis was really it was it was there like it was hitting me really hard so second semester of senior year is when I received my first B in high school and it was in AP biology it was an 82 unweighted so with the 10 points it was a 92 but it was like the first B I've ever gotten and so but I mean it was second semester senior year I was senioritis but yeah so an 82 a 92 in AP biology a 101 in AP government a 99 in applied design a 100 in an internship position like an internship I had to get a grade for instead of economics a 100 in journalism and a 105 in dual enrollment advanced composition which was 1102 my second semester senior year was a lot more chill I had two less classes because I didn't take I didn't take two classes at dual enrollment I only took economics for one semester and then the second semester I had an internship with the college and career office at my school and I received a hundred as my grade for that um, Class. My GPA was a 101.667. Those were my grades of my second semester senior year. A lot of people were scared that once you like get into your universities you can get rescinded if you get bad grades and yes that is true but if you're like a straight-A student and you happen to get one B 
your second semester of senior year, it's not they're not gonna rescind you for getting one B or two Bs. Like if you were a straight A student and then you went to like straight C's, there's obviously a problem. That was my transcript and I decided to do this video because I wanted to show you guys what a, like an accepted transcript would look like. You know, your transcript doesn't have to look like mine to be accepted. If you have B's, even if you have you've had a C before, like it's not the end of the world. Colleges aren't gonna be like, oh, you have a C, you're automatically not getting into our school. Their understanding about like situations and stress and rigor and all that. So if you're taking hard classes and you're doing well in them, they're gonna be like, oh, you can perform well at our university. If you're taking rigorous classes and you're not doing well in them, I suggest you take regular classes and try to do their best in those because it's not going to look good if you're taking hard classes and doing bad because you're going to be like, you can't really handle the rigor of a college course or AP course, so you might not do well at our university. So they want, they want to see that you're going to be able to handle like the workload and the course load that you're going to get at their university and not just like struggle by trying to look good on transcripts and stuff. So we don't do D's. Oh, I guess some schools do give out D's. Are you kidding me? My school doesn't give out D's. If you have anything less than like 69 or less, it's an F. When I was in high school, I tried to seek every available opportunity for me to make up like test, low test scores, homework grades, all that. So I'd ask for extra credit. I would stay after for tutoring. We would get points for it. I do um, test corrections, anything that's like available to me. Even if it wasn't available, I'd practically like beg my teachers to let me get this grade up just because I wanted to have better grades. Like if you're willing to put in the work, I feel like the teacher should be willing to raise your grade. Like I messed up on the test, but I can do work to improve that and show you that I know the information. So that's one thing I would suggest to you guys if you are having like you're struggling on tests, if you're not a good test taker or if you like missed a couple questions on the homework, just try to make the grade up if you can. Even if your teacher is like, no, I'm not doing this if they say in the beginning of the year. Try to make a good relationship with your teacher and try to get like extra credit opportunities or extra work opportunities to show that you really want a better grade in the class. Okay, so that was the end. I just look like a little kid. <laughs> okay, so that was the end of this video. This video should be very short when I edit it because I just had to go through the transcript. Basically, the gist of the video was to answer a couple questions that I received about my grades, what I received in certain classes, and kind of like the grades that got me into these schools. Your transcript does not need to reflect my transcript in any way to gain admission to these schools. Don't be scared if you have A's, B's, C's. You can't go back and change the past, but you can explain to the colleges why you received that grade or what kind of problems you were having at the time. So there will be a high school advice video coming soon about things I think would help you guys out um, in terms of like academics and grades and test scores. So. Be on the lookout for that and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Like and subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you next time.